Méta de choc, méta de choc. Méta de choc. Et si on se demandait pourquoi on pense ce qu'on pense What if we asked ourselves why we think what we think Shocking 8. La pensée critique appliquée à soi. Hello everyone, this show is in English, but let me say a few words to my French audience first. Please click at the bottom right of this video for English or French subtitles. Bonjour à tous. Nous voilà de retour à Vancouver dans la même série que ma précédente interview de Jessica Chab, ancienne gourou de la spiritualité New Age et personnage principal du film documentaire que nous faisons ensemble sur son parcours hors norme. Jessica est présentatrice d'une émission de radio basée à New York, WBAI, et elle a profité de ma présence pour faire une interview de moi. C'est donc à mon tour d'être passé à la moulinette. Croyances, esprit critique et métacognition, je vous dis tout sur ce qui me motive dans mon travail de documentariste et de podcasteuse. Cette conversation a été filmée, profitant de la présence de mon chef opérateur. Si vous êtes en train d'écouter cette émission sur votre application de podcast préférée, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Podcast Addict ou Deezer, je vous encourage à nous rejoindre dès maintenant sur la chaîne YouTube du même nom. Cette interview en anglais a été sous-titrée par mes soins en français et en anglais. Cliquez en bas à droite de la vidéo. Ready? Let's go! Thank you, Elizabeth Vitti, for being on our show today. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> so, you are a producer of documentaries, and now you also have your MetaShock podcast as well. Yes, true. I just launched a um, podcast in France, mm -hmm. and in French, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, which is called Meta de Choc, which is a play on words uh, in French, uh, playing with the, the idea of state of shock, but with meta as metacognition. So how metacognition can make us realize certain things and suddenly be shocked about the way we think and the biases we have. So I've for now had uh, four episodes mm -hmm. and it's going quite well. I'm happy with it. Cool. We'll talk more about that. I just am curious how you got into like, because the kind of films you make are very particular when mm -hmm. it comes to documentaries. Yeah. It's always has to have a theme of critical thinking, metacognition, yes. correct? Yes, exactly. That's the topics I'm interested in. How did you get interested in those topics? Well, mainly um, before that, I was a producer, uh, mainly making films about arts and history mm -hmm. and then I got interested in I was already interested in psychology and knowing people and myself you know mm -hmm. trying to communicate better with people and also know myself better but then I, I found out about metacognition which is really thinking about the way I think and the way people think collectively and personally mm -hmm. each person being different obviously and I got passionate about this and it came out actually at the time when I met you in Portugal uh, and since I've really focused on that because I think it's very interesting and very important that people um, be triggered and made to think about those things because we're not used to doing this um, to observe and question the way we think Uh, we know about psychology, we know about beliefs, but we don't necessarily dissect or just observe mm -hmm. our reflexes, our um, ways of thinking and reactions. And why do you think that is? Why don't people know to do this? I mean, it, it seems to be sort of obvious, right? Uh, I don't think it's obvious because if you're not educated in this way, you won't have the reflex to do it. I think mm -hmm. it's just, uh, I mean, someone, one can be... Um, curious about this mm. but observing yourself is not enough if you don't have a method to do it to actually dissect what you uh, can observe uh, you can go in circles and think all over again always about the same things and not really understand what's going on in your mind you can know what's going on in your mind without mm. really understanding and nowadays we have a lot of um, new information about this thanks to science and mm -hmm. cognitive science precisely and neurosciences too um, we know more about the way we think and and, and the the biases for example mm -hmm. this is quite new actually it's a few decades uh, and neuroscience is helping too so it's new and i think it ne we need education we need to be educated and we need to have the reflex and the interest and the cu mm -hmm. curiosity to go this way and nowadays this is not something that is 
brought up uh, about, mm-hmm. brought about. Yeah, that's um, right. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Um, at school or even in, you know, mm-hmm. your own family. It's not something that is important right now in our societies, I think. Is it uh, challenging for you to do or for others to do? Um, to Meta- be able to, yeah. About myself, yeah, you mean? Yeah, to be Observing. able to apply it, yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's challenging. Mm-hmm. I think it's, for me, it's very exciting mm-hmm. because I, I really like um, exploring my mind. I really like trying to understand what's going on, whether mm-hmm. when I'm fine or when when I'm sad, for example, or mm-hmm. struggling with something. It's really, for me, a tool. Mm-hmm. And it's actually something that makes me suffer less because when I'm sad or when I'm facing something difficult in my life, um, I can have this kind of external eye, mm-hmm. you know, and observe myself uh, struggling, actually, mm-hmm. but trying to understand what's going on or trying to name what's going on. Uh, well, what am I sad for? What, what's going on? Is it obviously linked to the fact that I'm preoccupied with or is it something else? Mm. Maybe there's something else. Maybe it's my education linked to that fact, the way I interpret it, for example. Mm. Or maybe it's something else that it's in the background I, it, that is not really conscient. Um, and, and so for me, it's, it's really something I, I love doing. And, and I have very nice results with this, actually, because it makes you... First, I would say it makes you have this external insight, mm-hmm. uh, which makes things far less dramatic. Suddenly, you're looking at it as if it was some kind of a fiction film. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you're not totally immersed in it. Rather than your life and taking it personal with all the things going on? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and second, when you observe things and you try to understand them and, and be critical about them and, and understand at some point that it's a bias, for example, mm-hmm. a very human bias, or that it's something you, it's a pattern you, you keep repeating, mm-hmm. then at some point you can actually understand, really understand the roots, understand what's going on, and then overcome it. So the results are very interesting, very, I would say, Um, it's very efficient. Mm. What I like about metacognition is how it helps you see your blind spots. You know, I'm very fascinated with that, right? Because it's such a hard thing to see. Um, But do you find that this is the same case for you? Have you discovered some of your own blind spots with metacognition? Yeah, I think the blind spots are there because we are not attentive to what's going on. We take for granted things we think we know, Mm -hmm. in a way. And uh, questioning uh, your mindset, so questioning the, the way you react to your life mm-hmm. and the nice and less nice events, uh, events, mm-hmm. sorry, in your life, um, is a way to, yes, to, to see the blind spots and put into the light things that you didn't even imagine you were thinking, for example. And to help you avoid unnecessary problems, Exactly. Right? So how you're from France. Yes. But how is your uh, metacognition, how is that being received there? Um. Well, um, it's interesting because I'm actually, I think I'm really the first one to make it something out of the scientific field. Like, I mean, in France, you have metacognition mainly linked to education, like trying to understand how students or children learn, how they have a reflection on their own thinking and how you can make them actually understand things. Like Zetics. Uh, sorry? Like Zetics? Zetetics? Zet- so, no, zetetic is a French word for uh, critical thinking okay. and skepticism. Uh, because skepticism, scepticism in French mm-hmm. means something a bit negative, like uh, criticizing. Mm-hmm. I'm skeptical about the fact that you're telling me the truth. That would be the way we use the word skepticism, okay. which is negative. It's not a positive thing like I'm trying to dissect, understand, be, be critical. Mm-hmm. So f- the French had to try to find a new word and they got this word from ancient Greek, mm-hmm. which is linked to the art of doubting. So zetetique is a very French, actually, expression. Okay. And it means critical thinking, just that. But metacognition is, is something that people are not used to hearing about. Mm-hmm. And I introduced kind of... Uh, the interest in, in metacognition among this world of zetetique. And um, yeah, people are quite curious about this um, because what I want to 
show them is that critical thinking can't be just used to criticize or to have some kind of a critical way of thinking about others. It has to be applied to yourself. Is that new for them? Uh, yeah, that's new. <laughs> yeah, you study yourself, you study your yeah, own patterns. Exactly. It's hard to study other people because you don't know what's going on within them, right? Well, you know, like, uh, in critical thinking, you're used to more um, trying to uh, uh, understand why people believe in such and such beliefs. Mm. So external people, not yourself. Right. You know, most people don't imagine they have beliefs or if they do, they think it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's their beliefs and they're fine with them but actually they won't question them and they won't have this metacognitive uh, way of approaching their own thinking. So I think it's very interesting that critical thinkers, uh, skeptics, actually understand that they can apply this view, this critical thinking on themselves, mm -hmm. on the way they think. And actually when we went to, you remember when we went to that uh, Skeptics Congress in Europe, in Poland, mm -hmm. um, one year ago, one I year remember. and a half ago, yeah. um, we met many people that mm -hmm. were not French mm -hmm. and they were not really into metacognition either. They were more about yeah. understanding why people believe in ghosts or believe in organic food and think it's uh, GMOs are so bad and this kind of stuff. And scientists that study critical thinking and psychology, but they don't know about metacognition. Mm -hmm. That was really interesting. Yes, and they don't apply it to themselves. They, they don't think to, yeah. Yeah, because obviously we all think we're right. <laughs> so we don't want to question our thinking, you know. Well, I don't think I'm right, but I just, there's certain things I just, uh, not certain things, I just don't know what I don't know. There's just some things you just don't consider. You just go about your way, living your life how you do, and then you're like, oh, why is this thing happening all the time? And then you realize, okay, there's all these blind spots and things I don't know about yet that if I can understand better, then I can prevent. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly the <laughs> point. And it's very exciting. <clears throat> to me, it's very exciting. And I'm glad because I met, um, now I have reached out to an audience in France mm -hmm. and people are intrigued because they have never heard of this. You have psychology, which is another way of doing it. But psychology is more with someone mm. um, um, accompanying you mm. whereas uh, metacognition is about self-analysis mm -hmm. which is very different so you can you can obviously know about cognition and human biases mm -hmm. this is helpful but then you are trying to apply it to the observation of your own thinking mm -hmm. so it's not someone a psychologist uh, helping you it's you doing it with yourself it doesn't mean you won't um, need or have benefits going to a psychologist mm -hmm. if you need it mm -hmm. uh, but it's a different um, tool tool yes yeah. exactly to study yourself and your own confusion mm. yeah um, where would you like to see um, your podcast and your work on metacognition to lead to do you want it to lead to education um, do you have a plan for it or the well, ultimate goal um, each show is either made of a conversation of um, when I meet an expert mm -hmm. about, I don't know, sociology, biology, neuroscience, or, and they tell about their research and what they found mm -hmm. linked to the way we think. Mm -hmm. Or uh, it's me meeting uh, someone like you and me mm -hmm. who is interested in um, exploring the way they think or recounting some kind of shift in their lives in the way they thought. For example, former believers mm -hmm. or um, people who suddenly understood things about themselves, mm -hmm. who have a very strong, interesting personal story. Mm -hmm. um, so with those two types of shows, if it's about education, which is, I think it is, it's more towards adults and people who are interested in knowing more, themselves more uh, or, or avoiding maybe certain sufferings and avoiding the same old traps you know you fall into mm -hmm. your whole life through. Uh, so yeah I, I would say my goal is to have people be triggered and interested in actually observing themselves mm -hmm. and analyzing themselves even you know in, a, in their daily life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about studying a very specific topic and gathering new information. It's more about having this kind of habit because mm. the show is every two weeks for, okay. for now. 
because I don't have enough time and, and I don't have enough funding for this to make it a weekly show. Mm -hmm. But I would like it to be a weekly show because I think it's it's nice that people get this habit, this kind of rendezvous. New patterns, <laughs> every better patterns. Every week, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to learn new things and maybe hear about uh, um, new experiences. And then I'm going to question myself thanks to those experiences or thanks to those experts talking about mm -hmm. how our mind works uh, and then question myself it's i want it to be a habit for people you know if they like it if they like the idea i would like this and the shows are mostly in french right now right you don't have any english shows yet it's all in french yeah <laughs> uh, the launching the the short uh, video for the launching mm -hmm. is uh, subtitled in english so anybody can go and have a look mm -hmm. and there's a blooper too in in english oh. uh, subtitled in english uh, but then the shows are mainly in french i want to do one with you okay uh, so i don't know yet if i'm gonna subtitle it in french or dub it uh, mm -hmm. but there will be an english version mm -hmm. for sure yeah. so you said you've done four shows so far yes what are the themes of or topics of each one? Uh, the first one is um, about zetetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is. it's an encounter with a um, kind of famous figure of zetetic in France. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a very interesting uh, journey, personal journey. Mm -hmm. He was a believer of um, conspiracy theories mm -hmm. and he was uh, also trying to find and hunt um, UFOs. Mm. So he, he was really passionate about this. Okay. Um, he's a kind of a geek. geek. <laughs> and, um, and then at some point, he was, he was a very strong believer, like uh, using cards to actually make decisions. Mm -hmm. He was making a film and actually using cards to make decisions. So it was very, you know, he was very advanced, very far into his beliefs. Mm. And at some point he had a shock because um, his um, cousin, who he loved, died in a car accident. And suddenly he was like, I don't understand the sign of this. What's the, why? You know, he was very much into synchronicities and Signs, yeah. trying to find the meaning in, in each sign in his life. Mm -hmm. And at that point, he was just thinking, what's this? You know, what is this supposed to mean? Mm -hmm. what, what's the, why should I see it as something good for me? You know? And so he started to question things and his YouTube name, because he's a YouTuber, is Mr. Sam, if mm -hmm. you want to check on, on, on YouTube. Um, he was the follower of a ghost hunter and that ghost hunter was making videos. And suddenly he made a video where there was a paranormal thing going on in the screen, like a, a box falling on the floor with mm -hmm. nobody around. Okay. And Mr. Sam, who is in the film industry decided to just inquire just have a look at the video and he found there was an artifact he found that the the, the ghost hunter had used an effect a video effect mm -hmm. to make it fall so it was a fake it was a long path for him to actually question things but what was really important for him was when he actually put up uh, online a video about this ghost hunter mm -hmm. saying exposing it but in a gentle way, just saying, okay, I found this artifact, there's something wrong in this video. Mm. And you, the ghost hunter, can you give me an answer, a video answer about mm. this? I would like to know why I found this, what's going on? Mr. Sam was thanked by the skeptics community in France, mm. saying, you're dealing with it in a very nice way. You're gentle, you're just asking questions. Uh, you're not uh, attacking the guy mm -hmm. and you're just trying to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And from then on, he felt, okay, I can be skeptical. I can question my beliefs and I'm safe with it, you know, because most people, when they question their beliefs, they, they feel like outcasts because they have to leave their community. They yep. have to leave everything. And suddenly some people were telling him, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And that's well done. You're making a good job. And from then on, he became a YouTuber specialized in skepticism. Mm -hmm. So that, that first show is really about him, his uh, path. The second? The second is about the uh, gay identity and mm -hmm. how gays and lesbians see themselves mm -hmm. and how uh, they interact their, with their environment, so private uh, environment. And, and most interestingly, in this um, show, uh, in their professional environment. This study was made by a sociologist I um, interview. Mm -hmm. It's a two episode uh, show. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very interesting because it was never studied uh, the way uh, gay people 
uh, actually adapt or see themselves uh, in the jobs uh, and how straight people see them also. And it's very interesting because there are many stereotypes, mm -hmm. but the stereotypes are also, I mean, they, they come from straight people, mm -hmm. obviously, but in the end, there are also stereotypes that gay people um, have about themselves in a okay. way, you know? So it's how gay people think. That's the theme of the show. And it's very interesting. The third one is about an uh, osteopath okay. um, who uh, wanted to better his uh, job, his osteopathic mm -hmm. job, and started to believe in New Age uh, beliefs mm -hmm. and conspiracy theories and light workers and this kind of stuff, and energy healing. and So that's also very interesting because uh, this is a testimonial, and uh, this person uh stayed in this kind of beliefs for four years mm -hmm. and then stopped mm -hmm. and then questioned it and said okay maybe i can do my job without all these beliefs and all these things about reptilians and and light workers and energy healing maybe mm -hmm. i can just do my job right normally and maybe i have intuitions maybe i can feel because he is a very sensitive person. He can really sense what people are feeling. Mm -hmm. And so he thought it had to be something special or spiritual. But in the end, he realized it was not helping and that mm -hmm. his clients were more and more gullible, more and more, you know, they came to him just to hear some magical stuff about, oh yeah, I can sense, you know, your grandmother is talking to you through this pain or this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And so he stopped doing this um, because after four years he realized, you know, he could do his job and understand he had this ability to understand people mm -hmm. psychologically. That was nice and interesting and, and um, useful, mm -hmm. but he didn't need the, the spiritual layer to it. You know? That was his meta shock realization, yes, yes, basically. Yes, yes. And the fourth show? The fourth show is with a philosopher mm -hmm. and it's about how algorithms are really attacking, I would say, our uh, capacity of attention. Mm -hmm. We need attention to reflect, we need attention to observe, we need attention to make good decisions. If we are flaky, if we are always, you know, interrupted by our smartphones or on social media going from one link to the other, it's something that actually um, uh, puts our capacity of attention in danger. Mm -hmm. And she studied this uh, as a philosopher, she specialized in uh, strategies of um, influence communication mm. uh, so she's um she's a teacher to mm -hmm. students uh, but she's also a counselor in uh, um, in, in, in new technologies and media mm. and how to reach out to people uh, and so she knows all the biases she knows how it works and how youtube and google make us stay on the internet and actually hijack our attention mm -hmm. for money obviously and for publicity so that's very interesting, and it's also a, a two-episode uh, show. Oh, a two-parter. Yes. Okay. And do you have an idea what your next show is going to be about? Yes. <laughs> My next show is a four- or five-episode uh, show, so it's a big one. Oh. And it's a testimonial from someone who was 35 years uh, in a movement, which is called Anthroposophy. Mm -hmm. And it's not very well known. This name is not very well known, but it's actually a group that um, gathers uh, Steiner's schools, you mm -hmm. know, Rudolf yeah. Steiner, uh, biodynamic um, agriculture, uh, also um, some kind of uh, para-pharmaceutical products such as creams, Villada, I don't know, Willada or something, it's a brand okay. that is quite well known in, in Europe. And his testimonial is very interesting because he started uh, being in this movement when he was nine, mm -hmm. he entered the China school. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he left when he was more than 40 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big deal. And he was actually a teacher. He mm -hmm. became a teacher in the China school. He became a very influent person in the movement. Mm -hmm. And then at some point he understood it was just brainwashing. Mm -hmm. And I was very intrigued and astonished mm -hmm. by his journey because how can you after 35 years, starting at nine, at the age of nine, how can you actually question things and how can you get out of it 
at some point. You have several meta shocks that yes. make you question yes. it. And yes, you can't continue. So interesting. Yeah. So and this person knows really well how to talk about this. He he's been out of it for close to ten years now. Mm -hmm. So he has a lot of insight. Understanding, of course, in the show he will be explaining what it is, this movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but he will also explain what was going on in, in his mind as a child, as a teen, as an adult, then involved in the group and all these steps and how difficult it was for him to mm. change his mindset. You imagine? Sounds like an interesting show and potentially a documentary as well. It could be, I don't know. Um, mm. A documentary is very different because you have to find a way to tell a story. Mm -hmm. It's nothing close to just a, you know, a conversation. Mm -hmm. it, it's really a story, how to tell a story. Uh, and I'm not doing reports, mm -hmm. I'm really doing, making films like fiction film, but documentary, you know. So I really want to, when I'm starting a film, I really want something that tells a story mm -hmm. that I can have, um, in which I can have very many different situations. And also someone who has some kind of um, appeal, mm -hmm. you know. Um, being in the frame and sometimes people, people can talk very well mm -hmm. on a microphone like in a radio show because a podcast is just mm -hmm. a ra kind of a radio show but then when they're in front of the camera they might become shy mm -hmm. or you know they might not be as interesting actually as in a podcast so yeah. good point so yeah, it's a it's, better it's modality yeah. for, for him and for you yes you know that people can change after a long time because you and I discovered um, that Jewish lady that was 98 and had uh, pork for the first time, True. right? So yeah, it can happen yeah, and it's, it's amazing. it's always possible. It's always possible. But in the case of this person I interviewed from this Steiner thing, I mean, it's, it's, it's a whole community. And I, I mm. agree, the Jewish community is also very present. I mean, for mm. people who really are adamant to practice their faith but um, there it was very a close community and with very specific beliefs mm -hmm. um, as a, a whole cosmology of things I mean it's anthroposophy uh, things for you mm -hmm. in everything mm -hmm. I mean it's uh, a religion it's a cosmogony it's a teaching it's a medicine it's a, uh, even banking. Mm. I mean, it's a tentacle. It's it's it's, it's a multinational uh, enterprise. Mm -hmm. And and once you're in the community, you have answers for everything, mm -hmm. and you don't have any need to go outside to go and see others. And obviously, it's like evil. You shouldn't go there. You mm -hmm. shouldn't go to the cinema. You shouldn't listen to the radio. You shouldn't watch TV. So you're like. In jail. So yeah, it's really good that you're doing this podcast, and it's just another way to um, get people, you know, aware about meta thinking and um, what they can do. And there's so many interesting stories and people out there. I'm sure that you'll find that, or that you find, or that will find you. Yes, to be true. Interviewed. It's very diverse. That mm -hmm. I mean, the topics it can seem very narrow mm -hmm. because when I say to people I'm making films about the way we think, they're like, what? "Okay, <laughs> that's so like." Okay, just neuroscience or what? Uh -huh. But no, it's so broad. You can, mm. you know, you can talk about so many mm. things, all the things that are that make us make decisions, that make us that influence us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's very wide actually, and the podcast is the same. I mean, you see the topics; they're very different yeah. from one another, and um, it's. Uh, I think it's infinite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah, you can see that too, and. Mm. Yeah, I just remember when you were talking to me about it. So it's great to see it into fruition now. Yes, it started in January, uh, in February. Yeah, mm. it's new. <laughs> <laughs> and you're working on a film right now. Yes. And you went out to Canada. You're yes. here in Canada, basically, with yes, me. Yes. Yes. Um, and it's called Memories of a Former Mystic. What made you decide to make this film? Well, um, so it's a film about you. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and um, well, when we met, you told me you were you would be interested in telling your story. Mm -hmm. And as I was, you knew I was a producer, so uh, it's something we thought about for quite a while before mm -hmm. actually starting to write the script. That's true. Together, and then it took a while also to write the script because in two years' time, uh, we have written three versions of it. Yeah, and quite different from one uh, another. So yeah, it's a 
big job. But what made me decide to do this, to make this documentary with you was that I think you're a great character. Mm -hmm. I mean, on, on screen, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you have a very nice um, energy, uh, mm -hmm. your body language and and uh, and also obviously you have many things to say and your experience, I mean, your story is outstanding. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be very interesting for people to, to know about your story. And what's interesting too is that in the end, talking about you, um, I was kind of talking about myself because I was a believer too in the new age. This is what I was yes. leading to subtly, yes, <laughs> indirectly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 15 years in the new age. That's right. Because you told me your story and mm. I was kind of encouraging you to share it as well in mm. the film, but you were a little shy about that, which is understandable because we're not proud of it. Nope. <laughs> and for me, I was very embarrassed with my story as well, but I, I also didn't want it to go to waste. I thought you know, I needed to do something with it. And if others could benefit from it, mm -hmm. then, you know, that would be, make me, it would help a lot, right? And yeah. I, yeah, I think it's very difficult to talk about this at first because you feel ridiculous. Yeah. You know, having, <laughs> having believed in such things. And I thought I was a light worker. I mm. thought I was an indigo child. I believed in energy healings and I believed in the reptilians mm -hmm. and I believed in the Pleiadians and you know all these stuff and and the fact that uh, humans were kept in jail in a kind of matrix you know and this kind of stuff. Fighting the so, darkness all the time like yeah. exhaustingly right? Yeah. So it take it took time for me to decide I would be in the film mm -hmm. but I I did it because actually when I presented the project mm -hmm. because that first first version of the script you were on your own in this film I was not part of it correct and I was not in the script mm -hmm. I was just directing the film mm -hmm. or producing it um, and when I was talking about the project to other producers mm. or or channels and people were so intrigued and they were like, how did you find her? Mm. And why are you so interested in this topic? <laughs> and how come you know so so much about the new age? We don't know that much about it. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, I was actually a believer. And they were like, oh, how interesting. <laughs> and so in the end, after the two first versions of the script, I thought, okay, maybe I should be in the film. Mm. So. I think it's a very good idea because we have, you and I, very different journeys. Yeah. I was in France during those 15 years of, uh, of belief and you were in Canada and around the world. Mm -hmm. And we come from very different backgrounds mm -hmm. and we actually believed in two different versions mm -hmm. of the many versions of the New Age beliefs. The buffet of it, yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's very interesting for the audience to see that, yes, you have a very... Um, astonishing outstanding story mm -hmm. but even more banal uh, stories such as mine because I was not a leader in any way I was mm -hmm. just a follower I was just a believer anybody can fall into those beliefs um, yeah. as much as anybody can become a follower of a sect mm -hmm. um, of a cult so um, I think, you know, now I'm more at ease talking about this because... Good, I'm proud I'm, of you. you know, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, I made a mistake uh, mm -hmm. and I, I went very far into this. Mm -hmm. But I'm like you. I, I think it's important that people know. I think it's, it's good that... Uh, also to show that, yes, we can make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And we can... It doesn't mean we're stupid. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean... Um, I mean, the belief can be stupid. The yeah. person is not necessarily, you know. True. Um, because we're influenced, because there are always good reasons. There are always reasons why we fall into those things. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was because I was in search of uh, the, the truth, mm -hmm. you know, with a big T. Mm -hmm. And um, I was ready to anything, to mm -hmm. find the truth. And now I know that, no, I'm not going to find the truth. It's unreachable mm -hmm. and I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. There are many things I don't know. There are many things I will never know. And I don't know what's after death. I don't know what's before death. I actually, now I don't care. That's very strange because I was so far into the beliefs mm -hmm. and now I'm so cool about it. I'm just like, okay, that's yeah. fine. You know, I don't know and it's fine. And now, like with you uh, promoting the film, uh, you're having other spiritual people come to you that like are convinced they want to tell you about like real spirituality. 
Yes. Um, and so what, what can we say to these people? How do we get them to understand mm. that we're actually talking about them as well? They're like, oh, this guru, this teacher, this is the one you yes. need to pay attention to. And then you said you looked at it and it's just the same thing, same song yes. as everyone else is saying. I think your journey is so particular mm -hmm. um, that some people just don't see that they could be like you. They could belong to the same way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And so that's also why in the film, my testimonial or the testimonial of Kelly, for example, who mm -hmm. you meet in the, uh, in the film and you interview, mm -hmm. who is a former follower of yours. Mm -hmm. I think those testimonials, those side testimonials, mm -hmm. because you are the main character, are very important so that people understand that it's not just a crazy thing mm -hmm. that happened to some girl somewhere mm -hmm. far mm -hmm. from their home, I mm -hmm. would say, because French people see you as a, you know, a North American person with a different culture in a way. Sure. Um, but showing them that more banal um, stories uh, actually led to the same mess, mm -hmm. uh, personal mess, I think it's very important. So I think this is going to be a nice way to make people understand that it's common, that so many people believe in those things. And it's not that you were in the wrong, bad spirituality or mm -hmm. false spirituality. It's just that this kind of spirituality is leading to always the same patterns. And spirituality in general, basically, they all lead to the same patterns. Well, Even the people we interviewed, many, you know, different people that were spiritual, they have mm -hmm. their different ways of coming to it, but it's always, again, the same thing. So, yes, I would say spirituality, religion, it's always based on the fact that you think you're on the right side, mm -hmm. you have the truth or you can reach mm -hmm. this truth thanks to guides or thanks to masters or thanks to praying or doing this or that, this ritual or this, following this dogma. There's always bad guys. Yes. There's uh, always some reward at the end. There's always some work to get to some goal. Um, You're not good enough. You yeah. have to do more. Yeah. yeah. So then we're also going to be, we just finished uh, filming in Canada. We did a week yeah. of filming and it was really fun. Mm. <laughs> um, and now if all goes well, we're going to film also in Europe and then we'll look for other examples as well. So yes. people of France can see, you see it's happening exactly. there as well. Yes. Not just to you, but other mm. people as well as we build our case mm. on this. And then also Indonesia, Bali, where I had my experiences as well. Mm -hmm. So yes. Uh, in France, it's quite interesting, actually, mm -hmm. because I I try to find nice sequences for you to be filmed mm -hmm. in France. And there's a, a specificity in France mm -hmm. because of our history. Mm -hmm. In certain regions, sorcery is mm -hmm. quite, you know, part of our history. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to see how the New Age, which is a, something quite new. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's around 100 years old. Yeah, many people don't know about it, but it's actually started in North America, in the US, at the end of the 19th century. So oh, yeah. it's not that recent. It's not linked to the hippies. The hippies is one stage, one step in the history of the New Age. But the word New Age mm -hmm. was invented and it, it was used in a book at the end of the 19th century in the US. Okay. And positive thinking and the law of attraction too. So mm. it's very, it's quite old, but it's less old than sorcery for example. And what's nice for me as a, as a director was to find that in France, the New Age is adapting to the places where it's spreading. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a virus, you know, mm -hmm. it's adapting to the animals it's getting on. Yeah. And, um, and, and in France, we are quite attached to our traditions and, and some kind of, uh, uh, you know, we have Druidism, Druidism. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a kind of, it's a sort of shamanism linked to uh, linked to nature mm -hmm. and so French people are th through the new age are going back to those roots mm -hmm. that were kind of forgotten since the 70s I would say mm -hmm. and 1970s mm -hmm. and and so they are saying yeah we're going back to the ancient wisdom and the witches and uh, you know the druidism and mm -hmm. stuff like this so it's very interesting to see how those beliefs adapt you know, mm. people want are interested in the law of attraction. They want to think that their thinking is actually creating their reality, mm -hmm. but then they have to make it match with their culture. Mm -hmm. And so, in France, we're going to go together to places, you know, old stones mm -hmm. from prehistorical era, and how people uh, link it to the new age. 
Whereas the New Age is actually an ideology that was created. An invention, at, yeah. Yes, at the end of the 19th century. So I think this is amazing. I think it's very interesting. To be able to show that. Yeah. Um, what are you we trying to say in the film? Would you say that it's um, people need to discard their spirituality? Or are we just trying to caution people about being so extreme with it, mm. letting it think for them? Because I know my idea of what I want to say. I just want to know if it's mm -hmm. on the same par because like people might take it as, oh, we're, we're poo-pooing spirituality mm. as a whole, right? We're not attacking it per se. We just want to be more critical with it because we've seen all the problems that can come from it and the dangers too. Yes, I think hu human history is made of beliefs mm -hmm. and even our daily lives, we are all believing in something. I believe that my car is gonna gonna start when I turn the key. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gonna check the engine each time I'm starting the, the car. So that's a, you know, that's a belief that is not spiritual. But I mean, humans are made to believe because we can't question everything all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. Mm -hmm. And we're not trying to say we don't, we don't need beliefs or we, d we shouldn't have beliefs. With this film, what I want is, it's the same as with the podcast. I just I think it's so important that we question the way we think, mm -hmm. our mindsets. And questioning the new age mm -hmm. is one way of actually questioning so many other things. And religion, uh, other spiritualities, mm -hmm. uh, just because if we just take for granted that one dogma, one ritual is going to save our lives, mm -hmm. at some point it's going to create a problem in our lives. If we focus on this or, or just rely on this, we don't make our own decisions anymore. And this is dangerous. Particularly when it starts contradicting itself, right? And we start, we stop doing, um, we stop psychologically evolving. And yes, we stop exactly. doing psychological We're fixed on something we think is the truth and yeah. we want to stick, or we want to mm -hmm. reach it. And then we're kind of uh, mentally impaired mm -hmm. because we just go this line and yeah. not any other line. And, and then we, I think we in jail ourselves. Yeah in this way. So that's that's the main thing, I think. And then if someone believes in whatever they believe, uh, we're not trying to attack or, or to say it's wrong. Mm -hmm. We're just saying, okay, anybody can believe in God. That's, there's no problem, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, then if it has consequences on your life, when you don't make your own decisions anymore, and you just rely on a guru or you rely on a priest or you rely on, on a book for everything, then there's, you're gonna suffer and you could, you could avoid this. Yeah, it's the answer to and the end all be all. Therefore, you're not thinking anymore. You're not questioning anymore. You become like a zombie. That's why like my word in, for meta shock is psychological archaeology. And what are you wanting to capture in Bali when we go to Bali? Um, what I'd like to shoot there is really you telling us about your change mm -hmm. and how it happened and how difficult it was because I knew you were went through a depression. It was not that easy to let go. Correct, yeah. Um, so I think it's very interesting because Bali is a very religious place, actually. I mean, there's a lot of new agey stuff because it's a new age mecca, but it's also very religious because the Balinese are always, you told me, I don't mm -hmm. know Bali, but you told me, mm -hmm. but they were doing religious stuff all the time. <laughs> I may get to show you it, you'll see for yourself and yeah. then I'll get your thoughts on yeah. it directly. Sacrificing animals, uh, it's music. Such, it's a bizarre, bizarre place. There is one time the a temple had a birthday and it was two weeks of like blasting music into the jungle and to all the places at 11 p.m. until 5 a.m. And then the priest of like saying his mantra chant over and over again. Wow. It's awful. <laughs> it's awful. For two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Yep. That's what they do when a temple has a birthday. Wow. <laughs> and they have many, many temples. <laughs> mm. Yeah. With the film, mm -hmm. I understand that we have a few partners now? Yes, um, a few organizations in Europe and in Canada mm -hmm. um, supporting the film. Mm -hmm. So there's one in France, mm -hmm. uh, there's three in Germany, mm -hmm. and there's uh, two in England and one in Canada. So in Canada, it's CFI Canada, mm -hmm. you link to. Um, in France, this is um, an organization that is trying to explain science, to popularize science. That's a better way explain, to say it. Okay. Uh, explain uh, science to people through a magazine, through a website, um, and now through the film. Yeah. And they're very, obviously very interested in pseudoscience. Mm -hmm. So that's also why they were interested in, in the film with you, about you. Mm -hmm. um, in, in Germany, it's interesting because it's um, 
our first partner in Germany was a, uh, an organization linked to uh, protection of the consumers. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a con German Consumers Federation. And they can see how much people are scammed, you know, mm -hmm. buying crystals or going to healings, uh, Reiki stuff, and, and how they want to inform the consumers that this is not actual medicine, it's not proven to, to be helping them. Mm. Um, so they, um, they were very supportive of the film. And it's actually um, thanks to them that we could come to, to shoot uh, these sequences in, in Vancouver. Oh, that's so right cool. Now. Thank yes. you so much, guys. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, there's also um, um, a humanist organization in Germany, mm -hmm. which is called Giordano Bruno uh, um, foundation. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we have a, and a skeptics association mm -hmm. too. Yeah, and we're going to be pitching to broadcast uh, stations. Yes, now the, the film is. Yeah, we're going to create um, a trailer mm -hmm. with the images we shot, the the videos we shot here. A second trailer. Yeah. A second trailer. Yep. Yes, uh, for specifically for broadcasting channels, mm -hmm. and um, we have good hints. Yeah, I'm quite. Um, happy with what's going on around the, the film. And festivals? Are we looking into festivals? And Not yet. We'll uh, try to have the film shown mm -hmm. once it's finished in festivals, obviously. Yes. Mm -hmm. This film is really made for TV. Okay. So it's going to be broadcast in Europe and hopefully in, in Canada because I also have a co-producer in Canada, in Quebec. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also have a, another co-producer in France and in Belgium. So, yeah. But would be, we'd like to get one in BC and maybe the States as well. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, because this show broadcasts for New York, right? Yes, and yeah. it's a it's a big project. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we're going we're going to Europe, we're going to Bali, mm -hmm. and there's many things to be filmed, and we want to make a feature film. So yeah, mm -hmm. cool. And also, your production company is Spirit and Matter, but not in English. Again. Not Spirit and Matter, Mind and Matter. Mind and Matter. Yes, oh. Uh -oh. but actually, <laughs> I've been yeah. calling it that for such a long time now. Yeah, uh -oh. I, actually, the thing is that in French, the yeah. word Esprit okay. can mean either spirit oh, so or mind. Okay. Yeah, so you were not that Mind far. is better though, <laughs> yeah, yes. for what we're so trying to do. The, it's called l'esprit et la matière. All right, thank you so much, Elizabeth Feiti, for being on the show. Thank you, Jessica. Pour en savoir plus sur le documentaire que Jessica et moi faisons ensemble sur son histoire personnelle et la mienne, vous trouverez un lien vers le site officiel du film sur metadechoc.fr. Je vous mets aussi un lien vers l'histoire de cette dame qui a décidé de manger du bacon pour la première fois à l'âge de 90 ans. Pour ceux et celles qui sont curieux de m'entendre parler davantage de mes anciennes croyances et de ce qui me motive aujourd'hui, j'ai rassemblé d'autres de mes interventions publiques dans une playlist du nom de Extra sur la chaîne YouTube de Metadechoc. Merci à tous pour votre fidélité et en particulier à ceux qui contribuent financièrement pour que ce podcast puisse croître et embellir. Si vous aussi vous voulez apporter votre soutien à Meta de Choc et son ton désormais légendaire, je ne peux que vous encourager à faire un don libre sur tipeee.com. Le lien est en description. Dans la prochaine émission, je vous ferai entrer dans les arcanes du mentalisme. Cet art qui s'amuse à manipuler allègrement nos si vulnérables esprits humains. D'ici là, prenez le temps d'observer la manière dont vous pensez et de la questionner. Vous n'imaginez pas ce que vous pensez.